Good rising, brethren. This is Big Judah coming to you guys in California. Before I begin, I give all praise to the Most High Yahweh. Acknowledgement to the Earthly Mother. Who is wisdom? Who is the Holy Spirit? Acknowledgement to Yahweh Shai. I pray the Most High blesses this lesson this evening, gives us more knowledge and understanding of the events of the past. In order to understand events that are currently happen on the earth. So we get a much better understanding of the things that are soon to come on the earth. Brethren, we're gonna get into a, uh, a book by Manly P. Hall. And I just want you to see how the Gentiles have interjected themselves into our history. You know, they put all these people in all these different lands and they've made it seem as if they've been the ones that have been in these lands the whole time. So anything that has uh, come from these certain areas or certain lands, they try to ascribe uh, these attributes to themselves. They want to make it sound like they're the Greeks. The Greeks that are there today are the Greeks that have been there forever. But you can see by the attributes and the things that you're going to read about right now that these people that were there, you know, pre-Christian era, before 1500 BC were not the same ones that were there, or that are there right now. So this book is actually called The Sacred Destiny of America. Oh, is it sacred or secret? Hold on. The Secret Destiny of America. Okay, we're going to read the start right here. Now, the ancient Greeks had a far better knowledge of geography than popular opinion today indicates. Now, see these ancient Greeks were not the people that are there now. The people that are there now did not have a great knowledge of geography, but the ones before them did. And that's something that we need to make sure we kind of clarify right here. Okay. Again, the ancient Greeks had a far better knowledge of geography than popular opinion today indicates. We have been deceived as to the full measure of classical learning because the Greeks did not commit the larger part of their knowledge to writing, and they bound scholarship with the vow of secrecy. Now, see, this was something that the Druids did. This is something that our people did. They did not share their knowledge with everyone. That's where this esoteric and exoteric understanding of knowledge, you know, was, was being implemented. But see, they try to make it sound like, oh, the, the ancient Greeks, well, they weren't even calling themselves Greeks back then. But the ancient people that were in these lands were writing down all this information and giving it to everybody. If they want to make, see, see the, the Greeks that are, that are here now, they want to take credit for everything. They want to take credit for all science, all math. They want to make it seem like they're the ones that have brought civilization to the world. So the ones, like I said, that were there now, that are there today, have been the total opposite of the ancients because the ancients wanted to hide and keep a lot of that information in-house. <clears throat> so continue. In ancient days, all learning was regarded as sacred. Wisdom was entrusted to the keeping of priest philosophers. Okay, so again, the Druids. And they were permitted to uh, communicate the choicest branches of the sciences only to duly initiated pupil, okay, pupils, to, bes to bestow knowledge upon those who had not prepared their minds by years of discipline and self-purification profaned the mysteries, desecrated the sacred sciences. And see, actually, like with the scriptures, the scriptures were not just given to anyone. That's why, like I said, the Bible goes against, you know, the ancient practices. They did not just give this information to everyone. That's why in the Bible, that's why even in the second Interest 14 talks about how there's going to be some scriptures that are given to the worthy and the unworthy. And this is letting you know right now that there are worthy and unworthy Okay, pupils. But see, in a universal doctrine, you want everyone to be subjugated to the same information and the same thinking and not and not thinking for themselves. So these this so this information you actually hear is even substantiated by Second Ezra chapter 14. So again, to bestow knowledge upon those who had not prepared their minds by years of discipline and self-purification, profaned the mysteries, desecrated the sacred sciences. 
And that's what and it says. So that's just why in, in Second Corinthians 14, it says it's going to be something given to everyone. But there's going to be a lot of books that are going to be held at the end for a select few. And these select few are going to be the ones that have prepared their minds. Okay. Have been disciplined through by years of discipline and self-purification. Okay. We've gone through all of these trials and tribulations in order to prepare us for the end, to be able to accept this new knowledge and understanding. We had to be broken down to the point where, you know, everything that we've been taught has been a lie. And we had to be able to recognize that and internalize that. And the vast majority of the world can't do that. They still are pushing the same lies that, you know, they've been told forever are the same ones they live by today. They can't take new information, you know, and interpret it and come up with any new, you know, in any new outcome, any new output. They can't do any of that because it's not in them to do that. Okay. So some years ago in discussing this fine point in ethics with the late professor James Breasted, the most distinguished of American Egyptologists, he confirmed my own findings and further stated it uh, to be his personal conviction that the classical civilizations concealed most of their learning under legends, myths, and allegories. And these have long been mistakenly accepted as the literal beliefs of these peoples. There could be no doubt that the existence of a great continent in the Western Hemisphere was known to the ancient Greeks, again, to the people that were there before the ones that are there now, okay? And also to the Egyptians and the Chinese. He said our people were spread out in all these different areas and our people went and ta taught the Egyptians. So the information they got about this, you know, continent, they would have gotten it from our people as well. It is nothing short of foolish to assume that the ancients lacked ships sufficiently seaworthy to navigate the larger oceans. And that's what they want to make it seem like everyone was stuck in their areas because they didn't have ships until Columbus figured it out. Okay. Which we know is not true whatsoever. Okay. So let's see here. Long before the Christian era, the older civilization had constructed boats far larger and more seaworthy than any of the vessels used by Columbus. One of the Ptolemies of Egypt built a ship large enough to have an orchard of fruit trees on the deck, together with swimming pools and fountains stocked with live fish. You see, this is information they, they hide. They don't want you to realize they've already been traveling all over the place. It's just certain groups were not allowed to travel. Calculations uh, based upon Plutarch's description of ancient voyages seem to indicate that the Greeks not only reached the coast of America, but explored the St. Lawrence River and part of the Great Lakes area. Plato, in his treatise on the destruction of Atlantis, wrote that due to the commotions in the ocean caused by the submergence of a vast continent, all navigation to the west ceased for a long period of time. This statement can only imply that such navigation had taken place in remote times. So they said these, these things were already going on. These are a lot of the, so a lot of that information that they've been trying to hide. That, you know, the, them going back and forth and having dealings with the other nations, with the Americas, with, you know, the fourth part. Greek mythology perpetuates the knowledge of a blessed land beyond the Western boundaries of ocean. In this blessed land dwelt the Hesperides, the beautiful daughters of night. And here also at the end of each day, the sun came to rest. In popular mythology, the Hesperic Isles were a kind of terrestrial paradise, like heaven, right? Like the Garden of Eden, right? This is what, you know, Columbus was trying to get, make his way back to. Because they were all well aware of these, you know, of these islands and his paradise that was over here. Thus, under a thin veil of mystic symbolism was concealed the account of a Western continent of great size, fertile and rich, and abounding in all good things. The ancients believed the earth to be surrounded by a sphere of the constellations, and they assigned to each country the star groups uh, which were above the country's particular area of land. In the arrangement preserved in the writings of Aratus de Soli, the constellation uh, of the eagle spreads um, its wings across the North American uh, continent 
the serpent winds its uh, coils over Mexico and Central America, and the dragon floats in the sky over Japan and China. Okay. Perhaps Sir Edward Landseer uh, was not too far wrong when he declared the symbols of the nations and the emblems. Okay. And we will talk about that more later on. This is the map that they had right here. They said they had a uh, written already from a long time ago. So they had this information about the, uh, the fourth part. And they had these maps as well. So again, I said, don't get it, don't get it twisted. They, you know, they know all this information. What do you think they've been hiding? They know about all these dealings with the peoples before this technology that was going on before. You know, these huge ships that had swimming pools, like a carnival cruise ship sounds like. You know, had trees on it, growing on it. You know, all those different types of things. But like I said, but what they're slick with is trying to slide themselves into the ancient Greek category, like it was them. And we know that that's not the case whatsoever. All praise to the Most High, Yahweh. Acknowledgement to the Earthly Mother. Who is wisdom? Who is the Holy Spirit? Acknowledgement to Yahweh Shai. Shalom, family. 